Girl, you know just how to get my attention. A lot of bullshit from the past I can mention. Come fuck me, you know I don't like tension. You ain't really fuck with me way back then, but how about now? Cause I'm up right now, and you simply suck right now. Hey. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be discussing my experience back to Las Vegas from Miami after my BBL. So um, I did get wheelchair service um, added on to my um, ticket for the way back. And I also upgraded my ticket, I think like a day, the same day or a day before, the night before um, my flight to first class. And it was like real cheap doing it that way compared to you pre-booking a first class ticket. I think it was like maybe um, $50, $75 upgrade from how much was already additionally paid on the ticket. So I felt like that was a pretty good deal compared to when you were booking your ticket pre. It was like maybe $300 extra or something like that. So um, I figured um, doing it a day before or the same day, you would get cheaper rates just due to the fact that if those tickets weren't booked already for a first class, they're gonna be a little bit more cheaper because they see no one sitting in them. So I did it that way and I feel like it was a really good idea doing it that way. I do know some girls, um, I had a surgery sister who actually booked her whole row, which that would have been something I would have loved to do as well because then you can lay down with your butt right up in the air and don't have to worry about sitting on your BBL pillow and messing up your BBL for sitting down for a long time. My, uh, my um, plane ride was, Five hours and 30 minutes to go back to Vegas um, for after my B after having that BBL and it was definitely I'm not gonna say it was like painful but it was just like um kind of like eerie in a sense like just being in that position like being in the same position for a long time so um, when I first you know got on the plane I had to sat on my BBL pillow and everything like that and um, after I ended up getting on my knees, so once the seatbelt signs were taken off, I was able to move, I can walk if I want to. I didn't walk though, because I was in first class and I didn't feel like we're walking all the way back and forth. I did not feel like doing that. And I didn't really feel like walking either, so I do know girls that just literally stand, like, you know, until they have to put back on their seatbelts. But it was really late that I, when I was leaving, it was like around 9 p.m., so I was extremely tired and ready to go back home and be in my bed. So, um, I wasn't standing or anything like that. What I did was I did switch, switch positions and I got on my knees, which I do have a clip of me doing that. A small little short clip of me just being on my knees and kind of showing you guys that I was on my BBL pillow and how I just, you know, end up just being on my knees on my BBL pillow and doing it that way, um, which I did find to be more comfortable than sitting on the BBL pillow right after surgery. But I do advise if you are going to have like a long plane ride back home like me or even like maybe a three hour plane ride for instance I do advise if you do feel like changing positions to bring a small um pillow with you to have for your knees because my BBL pillow is pretty hard so me sitting on it wasn't too bad because it's like sturdy um really sturdy and everything like that but on your way back if you plan on being on your knees um I do feel like um I do advise for you to just bring a pillow maybe and um so you can be really comfortable because i would have definitely loved to be in the position on my knees more longer than how i was on my bb pillow just due to the fact that i actually felt like it was more comfortable for me to be on my knees and um i was kind of looking around to see if people were giving me stairs but they kind of weren't but um i really didn't care i was just like shit i'm trying to be comfortable i just got my ass done yes i think i'm the shit yes i know i'm the shit like i didn't give a fuck like what anybody was thinking there was actually a lady it was like a girl and, a, and her, I guess her friends, whatever. I do have a clip of me talking shit that I'm gonna add at the end. But pretty much like, um, like I seen her like laughing and giggling at me. Or I know she was fucking doing it, like, you know, just laughing. And then like I end up laughing right back because like, bitch, look, I'm priority boarding your um, group number six home. I'm boarding first and look, you're sitting way in the back and I'm in first class now I'm laughing at your ass. <laughs> but you are gonna get stares because there are people but for the most part um like people on the miami airlines when i was um, doing the wheelchair service they seed a lot with like and there was actually girls in that area there was like three other girls in that same area as me that also had their butts done that i seen so it was like pretty cool looking at them also with the wheelchair service and they got their asses done so they, it's really often out there that they see stuff like this so obviously it's like not new to them that they're seeing girls getting their ass done and flying right back home so but um it was a 
like I said, it wasn't like a horrible experience or anything, but since I did have a longer flight, like I'm not sure how long your flight's gonna be back home, but like I said, since mine was a five hour and 30 minute drive, I mean flight, um, and I didn't have a comfortable, um, you know, something like my BBL pillow wasn't comfortable when I was on my knees. Like I said, I end up just being like, it's just really kind of uncomfy a little bit. So if you can, if you can book all three tick, I mean, all three seats or whatever like that and be able to lay down, I advise, you know, maybe to do that if you book ahead and pre-book, maybe the tickets might be cheap to book all three seats that way, which would be awesome or whatever. Um, the car service that I got back home, I mean, that I got to, the, that dropped me off at the airport is called Miami. Okay, let me not mess up the name. I'm going to just add the, add their Instagram down below because I do not remember the name of the car service that I used. Um, the nurses that I have, they do also do that, but I didn't have them on, I didn't have them on my last day, so they weren't able to obviously drop me, but if you do book with, um, DOS Care, they do pick up and drop off at airports as well with their services. Like I said, since I didn't have them booked on Sunday, I ended up having to go through, um, another third-party company, which the company that I booked with, I feel like they're all, um, they were extremely amazing. I ended up having to switch the times that I booked with them last minute, and they're able to accommodate me, which was such a blessing, so I was really scared that with me, like, I think I maybe told them, like, a good seven hours in advance, which to me, that's kind of last minute because of the day of, so I'm not sure what other drives or anything they have booked prior to me. So I ended up having to have them come actually two hours early because after looking at my flight, like I got the times mixed up. So um, I ended up having to switch out my times and they were able to accommodate me by switching them out and getting me two hours before the time that I told them, which was awesome. I got to the airport two hours in advance, which um, I've had bad experience in the past by being exactly on time at the airport and me not knowing how the you know how much traffic is going to be at the airport i like to just always be there early because you never know what's going on actually when i got there i ended up um walking da damn near in circles so damn near you really do need your wheelchair service because i felt like really lightheaded after having this huge luggage trying to figure out where the fuck to go you know like don't mean to cuss but i mean like it was just like you need that wheelchair service because even though i was dancing and feeling good after surgery when you're on your feet too long and stuff like that and if you wasn't drinking water and you start to be dehydrated whatever you get lightheaded and um i think that day i did drink a lot of water but it's just like i just started to kind of be paranoid prior to me like oh my god am i gonna miss this flight like i always get nervous when it comes to me and my flights so like i said i just had a bad experience in the past of me missing flights and stuff like that or me not being on time to check in and then they won't accept me because i wasn't on time or something like that so um that was just really my own my one of my biggest advices if you can just bring an extra just bring like a soft pillow so when you get on your knees if you plan on you know switching positions or not um definitely bring a pillow um i'll have the link to the car service i had below and like i said if you book with dolls care they do pick up and drop off um at the airport but like i said since i didn't have a book for the day that i was leaving um i didn't you know book with them and I think they already had a full schedule because I was planning on having them drop me off, but they already had like a full schedule or something going on that day that I was sleeping. So yeah, but um, I am gonna add clips at the end of the video of me, you know, in the car, you know, on my stomach, um, headed to the airport, and then just different little clips that I took at the airport and stuff like that, and me talking about how my flight was and stuff. So I am gonna add that at the end. Other than that, there's not really too much to talk about or too much to say other than I feel like if you can, um, if you can do it, get first class or um, book, you know, all the, your whole road to yourself. Um, I definitely feel like that's a need for after surgery and bring comfortable clothes. What I wore was um, a t-shirt and some sweats. The sweats on the back, it said, stop looking at my stop looking at my butt so those are my favorite sweats I wear those all the time now I'm mad that I got my butt done so I would um insert pics of my outfit back but I was just super comfortable at, and then it I was a little bit uncomfortable because I did have my and this is why I stopped wearing like when I do go out like in the car or whatever um I stopped wearing like my phones and my boards and stuff like that because on the flight back I did have my three foam boards on with like I said at the time this fa the um pretty girl fa was already extra tight on me I felt like 
Now it's loose, but I have the three foam boards, the um, the board in the front, my backboard, and my drain. Like I had a drain at the time, so when I did come back to Vegas, I literally just pulled it out. Like I was just so sick of it, and I pulled it out. So I will um later on post the video of me actually showing you guys me taking out my drain. So I would do that video too. But I just kind of wanted to just come on here and just kind of explain my experience back. Like I said, it was nothing hard or difficult, but I do, like I said, advise wheelchair service, first class, book the three seats if you can, and um, pillow. There's not really too much to say, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure how far you guys are going, so it's cool if you only have an hour ride, two hour, but I think anything three hours or more, definitely bring a pillow for your knees so you can kind of switch positions. So you're not just sitting on your BBO pillow, and like I said, you're kind of... A little bit out of it for the most part so I end up just falling asleep and being comfortable feet right up I just am calling it a day but that's all for this I'm gonna enter the clip so you guys can see that and bye oh like comment and subscribe if you're not already thank you First class as a bad bitch should, and that's on period. Here at the airport, getting my wheelchair service. So y'all, they told me that um, wheelchair service was over here near Starbucks. And then when I went to the TSA, they're like, oh yeah, wheelchair service here. I go all the way in. I'm like, okay, where's my wheelchair? They're like, oh no, you have to go all the way over there. So now I'm back. So now I'm actually in the wheelchair service. So I'm freaking hot and sweating. I look a mess. Good thing my eyelashes are still on. But yeah, I'll keep you guys updated. So the guy who was my wheelchair assistant, he was super nice and friendly. Um, I'm sitting here in my gate now. I don't like board until like the next two hours, but I was paranoid as shit. So I wanted to be early as fuck at the airport. Especially because it's Sunday and it's late and it's around the holidays. I was not sure how the um, airport was going to be looking like. So I'd rather be here early than on time and then or late. You know what I'm saying? And rushing and shit and paranoia. Because I get paranoid. Because there's been plenty of times um, where I was um, late to the gate. Where I had to wait by on standby to be you know on the next flight. Or there was no flights where I had to wait till the next day. So I was sleeping at the airport. So... I was like, I'm not about to be doing that. I'd rather be here way early than to be just on time. The wheelchair service was definitely a big help, especially because I had a huge ass luggage. So I have first class, so I have two free luggages up to 70 pounds. And yeah, so I get priority boarding, priority with my luggage. So I advise you if you can afford it, do first class because um, if you brought a lot of stuff, um, like I said, instead of the 50 pounds that you get normally, you get the 70 pounds up for your luggage. And then um, you get, like I said, priority seating, priority boarding, and it's up to two free luggages. So if you can afford first class for after your surgery, I definitely advise you to save up for it because I feel like it's money well spent. And yeah. So I'm here in first class. I mean, I can't even flip the camera, but that's how I'm sitting. <laughs> I have the first seat. You guys, so what I'm doing is keeping my feet up here. It's extremely comfortable because I'm on my BBL pillow. And it's kind of like pushing like kind of lifting me up a little bit where I don't feel too much pressure on my pillow but it feels like really comfortable so if you can get first class and get the first row so you can put your feet up here I just landed you guys I was a long flight 5 hours and 32 minutes um, I will see service now headed to get my little luggage my mom's on my, her way to get me. 
already told her to have the seats ready, reclined, so I can put my ass in the air. My ass hurts. Um, the first like hour I sat on the um on my knees, well, um, I sat on the, um, my BB pillow, and then the lights turned off so I can take off my seatbelt. Then I sat on my knees, and then I just for the rest of the flight I was on the BB pillow because I felt like it was more comfortable than my knees because it's my um. BB pillow is a little bit more um, hard so for if you have like a pillow or something I advise you to probably bring that so if you want to be on your knees I felt like it was a little bit more comfortable on my knees but since I had a hard BB pillow I didn't really like it see I'll give you guys more updates later mm -hmm.